Today I'm taking a trip on Poland's own electric long distance train. We will be taking a look at what it's like to travel on a modern Polish intercity train as we travel southwest on the 4 hour journey from Warsaw to Wasla. Come join me to experience what it's like to travel on Poland's own Pisa Dart train. Today's journey starts from the Warsaw Central Railway Station located right in the heart of the city. Opened back in 1975, the station sits right next to one of Warsaw's most well-known landmarks, the incredible Palace of Culture and Science Building. Let's go and catch our train! The station here in the center of Warsaw acts as a major transportation hub connected to the nearby suburban railway station, the Metro Line M2, many tram and bus routes. So it's very easy to reach no matter where you're staying in Warsaw. The main concourse here at the station is brightly lit, has plenty of shops and places to eat, as well as good information on train departures, as well as a major ticket office. On the level above you will find some seating. And that's probably my main concern about this station. There's not a lot of seats to sit and wait for your train, and you will see that clearly on the platforms as well. Down on the eastern end you will find the ticket office. However, for intercity journeys like the ones I'm taking, you can just buy a ticket online on the PKP website. I had no issues buying my ticket there, so I would just recommend doing that and skipping the queue. I arrived around 40 minutes before departure and I wasn't feeling particularly hungry, so I just decided to go down to the platforms. Here in Poland they use a little bit of a different platform system compared to most places, where a train will be departing from a platform and a track, so make sure you're heading to the right platform and then finding the right track at said platform. Seeing all those people standing down on the platform, I was kinda regretting not going to the McDonalds and just sitting there. But hey, let's see what they're all waiting for. Some of them were going on this Express Intercity Premium train, which is the flagship product of the high-speed railway services here in Poland. I'll be having a video on this coming out in the near future, so subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. And here it goes off on its journey to Kulovisek. Along the platform you will find these screens showcasing the formation of the train and where each wagon will be placed on the platform. I will spare you for the wait time on the platform, so here's our train arriving. Intercity 1624 Fretro, which starts from the Warsaw East Railway Station before arriving here in Central. Time to head on board. I'll be traveling in first class today as it was only a few euros more than standard class. While the train arrived early from the Warsaw East Railway Station, we ended up sitting here 20 minutes after scheduled departure time. But now we are off on the 4 hour 20 minute journey down to Wroclaw. And now as we roll out of the station, it's the perfect time for us to take a look at today's route. We are traveling on board Intercity 1624 Fred Row, which starts from the Warsaw East Railway Station before arriving here at the Central Station. After that, the train continues to the Warsaw West Railway Station. From here, we will head in a southwesterly direction towards Szczestochowa, stopping in a few towns along the way. After that, the train takes the line west towards Opole and Wroclaw. The train covers the total distance of 411 km in just about 4 hours and 31 minutes. This gives the train an average speed of a respectable 90 km per hour, 
traveling at speeds of up to 160 km per hour. As we make the way out of the Vasheva area, let's take a look at the seat. In the base of 4 you will find a fold-out table big enough to fit a laptop. There's also a power outlet for each seat. A movable armrest, as well as what I think is cup holders, in a bit of an odd spot. There's a head cushion. The seats are fairly firm. And I think for the 4-5 hour journey down to Roslau is about the maximum I would do in them. The train also features free Wi-Fi, but took many attempts to connect. And when it did, it couldn't even load the YouTube homepage. Let's have an explore of the rest of the train. Now we're passing through first class, which is in a 2 plus 1 layout and has plenty of luggage racks and overhead storage. Next up, we are entering the disabled area, which is not step 3, but has a lift. And now on to the excellent Wars restaurant car. I'll be sampling the food from that later in the journey. And now we are passing down to second class, which also looks pretty comfortable, but seems to like some storage space. As you can see, it's mostly laid out in a 2 plus 2 configuration. With the majority of seats being airline style, but there are a few base of four. And no video is complete without a look at the toilet. The soap sensor worked fine, unlike the one for the water tap. It will seem like the train already has run out of paper. But there is a hand dryer. Otherwise the toilet is clean, so it gets a thumbs up from me. As I mentioned earlier in the video, these trains were built domestically here in Poland by their own railway manufacturer Pisa. The trains have had a fair bit of issues with delays and reliability, and it would seem they still struggle here six years after the first one was introduced to service in December 2015. Shortly after we departed Warsaw, the train came abruptly to a stop in the middle of nowhere. The train seems to have lost power, as all the lights went out and my phone stopped charging. A few minutes later, it seems like they managed to get some power to the train again. So hopefully it's just a matter of minutes before we get going again. I was starting to get a little worried as I had booked a flight out of Roslau that same evening. Luckily, shortly after we were on the move again. But at this point we are now just south of Warsaw and we have already picked up a 40 minute delay. That being said, these trains do pick up the speed quite quickly. And with that, cue the montage of the scenery along the route.
time to sample some of the onboard food. For that I used the Wars app on my phone, where you can order everything and have it delivered at your seat. I went for some traditional Polish dumplings with a meat filling and some caramelized diced onions on top. The food is freshly prepared on board, and for just about 8 euros including a drink, is excellent value. After the excellent lunch on board, it wasn't long before we were approaching Roslau. I paid 14 and a half euros for this trip, booked around 3 weeks in advance on the PKP website. The earlier you book, the better deal you get. I've seen prices down on this route as low as about 7 euros. While these trains are not certainly the best intercity trains out there, they're good for routes of this 4 to 5 hour distance length. And with an excellent onboard restaurant as well, I'm pretty happy. It's great to see Poland has maintained its train manufacturing industry and continue to produce good trains, albeit with some minor issues. We are now passing by the locomotive works here in Roslau, and that means we will very soon be at the main station where this train terminates. It was great being back in Poland, and I hope to come back again sometime in the future. I would like to remind you, if you have enjoyed this video, to give it a like, and if you would like to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button down below. If you'd like to follow my travels in real time, I have a Twitter where I post my travels. Thanks for following the trip today, and I hope to see you back for another video.